completed the majority of the crew exchanges. As we all know, this call came in at 445 this morning and crews responded from not only here in the Mount Charleston Fire Protection District, but also the Las Vegas Valleys. We have crews from Clark County Fire Department, the City of Las Vegas Fire Department, who actually did the majority of the extinguishment in coordination with uh, the Mount Charleston Fire Protection District. We have Nevada, or excuse me, the U.S. Forest Service and also BLM on scene. Uh, so Clark County is in the process of exchanging the City of Las Vegas fire crews to send them back to the City of Las Vegas uh, so they can uh, go back to return to their fire stations. Uh, currently where we are in the operation, uh, the, we're, in, we're in what we call the overhaul uh, stage where we're trying to extinguish any hidden fires that are just smoldering. As you can see in this, from the structure behind me, there's, a, there's light white smoke coming off of it, which is primarily a result of hidden fires that we have yet to be able to extinguish because we have not gone inside the structure yet. Our plan of operation from this point forward, we just backed in uh, Clark County Fire Department Truck 11. Uh, they actually normally work uh, in the city of Las Vegas uh, on the Las Vegas Strip, but we called them up here to do a, a, an operation on the roof. Our plan is to bring an excavator up here with the assistance of Public Works. We're going to start peeling back the roof structure, which is the primary hazard for firefighters right now because it has collapsed in on the building. So we're going to peel that back and then probably use the aerial or the truck company uh, to get above the, uh, the structure and extinguish any fires that we can that we can see from that vantage point. So that's our current operation. In addition to, uh, the investigation is currently underway. We believe we have uh, the origin uh, isolated to a specific area in the vicinity of the dining room, uh, but cause is yet to be determined and it will probably be quite some time. Uh, they're in the process of doing what we call digging out the fire. That's where they remove all the debris from on top of where it probably started so they can identify exactly what the source was, if possible. Uh, that's where we are with the current operation. Are firefighters right now able to um, take all the items out of the building, like you said, without even with the hazard that the, that the roof is unstable? We're not doing that in the majority of the building. We've been able to do that in where we think the origin is because whatever roof structure was on it completely burned off, which is kind of what gives you know, gives us an idea of where it started, where the most damage is, you know, where it burned the longest and the hottest. That's where we start our focus, and we think we have that identified, and there's no roof structure on top. It's all, it all burned off. Uh, so they were able to pull whatever fell, fell in, pull that out, and now they have basically open sky above their heads. So it's a safe investigation. And that's still, we're still talking about the dining room vicinity area. The vicinity, I'm going to say the vicinity of the dining area, where it was originally as crews arrived on scene, uh, again, Mount uh, Charleston Fire Protection District was crews were first to arrive on scene and they reported heavy fire in the vicinity of the dining area. Can you talk about the weather, the light rain, is it making a difference at all or are you guys expecting heavier rain? Uh, currently, uh, the rain is not having an impact. If it was heavier rain and if it was earlier in the incident, that would assist us with any embers, you know, that were going up into the sky and possibly falling on either, you know, the dry timber up here or people's homes. Uh, but earlier this morning, the weather was it was more clear and sunny when the fire started. Um, and so currently with this light drizzle, it's not having an impact one way or the other. Can you talk about how important it was to get on this fire early and the dangers that came with this? And who should be credited for keeping it to this one structure? Honestly, uh, it's a it was a joint effort. Uh, I'll say again that the city of Las Vegas Fire Department because of their vicinity in the Las Vegas Valley, you know, they cover the majority of the Northwest, where Clark County units cover the majority of the south end of town and east ends of town. Uh, the city units were primarily here first. Uh, we did have Mount Charleston Fire Protection District who launched an early attack to put water on the fire and try to keep it from growing as best they could. But a, a fire like this really requires a lot of resources. And we have what's called automatic aid agreements where we all help each other out automatically so when a call comes in, our, our central dispatch center just sends whatever the closest resources are. And for this particular incident, the majority of those resources were the city of Las Vegas. Could have been worse though with up here in this terrain? Absolutely. If we didn't get water on the fire, I think, you know, the, it, it's very likely that it could have spread to some of these adjacent lodges. And you can see all the adjacent lodges around here have pine trees. 
you know, and it only takes one pine tree for another pine tree and then another, you know, pretty soon we could have potentially had, you know, a large forest fire. The, the progression of a fire inside of a structure varies depending on the structure type. Uh, this particular structure is not, it, it, the majority of it is what we call heavy timber construction, a lodge. Um, so it's, it's old pine, you know, logs, etc., stacked on top of each other. Those don't burn as fast as a typical, what we call a lightweight structure that, like our homes in Las Vegas. So they don't necessarily, they don't burn as fast, but they do put off a lot of radiant heat. You know, and all the structures around it are pretty much log homes and log structures. You know, so they're not necessary. They're not as susceptible to um, radiant heat as a lightweight structure, um, but the pine trees are. You know, the pine trees are very susceptible, and I, I I expect there was a lot of pine tree clearing around the lodge as is required generally. You know, make sure you keep your pine trees away from the homes so it doesn't. You know, any house fire doesn't spread to the pine trees and vice versa pine tree fires don't spread to the houses you know so um, again this was a, a great effort by all parties involved all departments that responded you know we always work well together and this is another example of where we were able to get up here quickly you know respond from town get up here quickly and keep this fire from extending I have not but we are in contact uh, with the with the property owners The answer to that is no, and the reason is because we, 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 again, we have a close relationship with, with the departments that are up here, uh, not only the Mount Charleston Fire Protection District, District, but also the U.S. Forest Service. So this wouldn't, this isn't our first time coming up here. And here we have the City of Las Vegas truck company that's departing and heading back to, back to Vegas. interior of the structure for potential victims or fatalities. Uh, we have very low degree of suspicion that, that, there's, that there was ever anybody in there. There's no reported persons lost. The uh, summer year, we're in September, would have been different if it was winter, if it was snow or something like how, you know, how does the season really affect this fire? Well, what, I think what would have made this more challenging for us uh, is if the roads were wet and icy, you know, then we have a high degree of concern for fire trucks coming from Las Vegas who aren't equipped, you know, to drive on icy roads because that's not necessarily what we do on a regular basis. So our, our response would have maybe been a little bit delayed, but more than likely if there was snow piled on all these trees, you know, that would have lowered our concern for, you know, extension into the forest and also adjacent homes if their rooftops are covered in snow, um, that, that lessens the degree of concern for fire extension. Are you willing to speculate at all on potential causes? Like, you know, what, what's on the table? I can't speculate because there's so many different, you know, possibilities. Uh, it could be electrical, it could be uh, a cooking thing, it could be, uh, arson it, it could be a lot of things you know um, so it's really impossible to speculate and it's not fair to do so how much longer do you think the road will stay closed a few more hours or th throughout the rest of the day no, I, I think that it'll probably be an hour or two more hours. I, I would assume because we have the majority of our resources um, out uh, that we don't need and the majority of the resources that we do need are in you know I guess probably our biggest concern um, I'm pretty sure they're letting homeowners pass both directions. You know, our biggest concern is we don't need people coming up here and jamming up the roads just to see what happened. You know, and so we may continue just blocking people from coming up here uh, for recreational purposes for quite some time. Thank you. What do you think 
It's really hard to say. I would guess a few days. Um, a few days before we know, and it will be probably longer before we release that information. Thank you. Thank you. Have a